This is the day that the Lord hath made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Amen. How good it is to be in the house of the Lord this morning. How good it is to see each and every one of you gathered here on this beautiful Sunday morning. Those of you uh, worshiping with us online, we're glad that you're watching this morning. Uh, we ask that you uh, uh, like us or, uh, or, or reach down in there and on the right-hand corner of your screen and share uh, the video this morning. That way you can uh, witness your faith and, and uh, share that with somebody else that you uh, think might need to watch this morning. Uh, but we're glad that you're here and everyone is here on this beautiful morning. Um, we have uh, a few of the uh, walk books. Adam, Adam Hamilton's book, The Walk, that we're reading uh, uh, throughout Lent. So pick one of those up if you would like. There's also a prayer journal that goes along with that. I've added a few other things back there on the table. There is a, uh, a little static cling uh, thing here that uh, uh, reminds you. I guess, I guess it's for uh, sticking on your bathroom mirror when you go in there or someplace where it'll stick like that. It, it reminds you of the five uh, areas of, of our walk with Christ uh, that we need to focus on. So those are back there. There's little key tags back there that uh, you put on your key ring that do the same thing, just a, a little reminder. And then there is uh, a little credit card looking thing that has John Wesley's covenant renewal prayer on it. And I'll talk about that a little bit. Uh, in the in the sermon oh and uh, God is big enough bracelets we still have plenty of those so uh, feel free to gather some of that stuff up uh, when you leave today those watching online if you would like some of those items uh, contact me and I will see that you get those uh, but these are uh, all available uh, to help us in our journey in Lent uh, this this uh, season Lenten season so as we begin our service this morning let us bow for a word of prayer Amazing God, we thank you for today, and we thank you for the beauty of the day, but most of all, we thank you for the opportunity to gather in this place, that we might come here uh, with our families and our friends uh, as a community of faith and open ourselves up to you uh, in the form of worship. And through that worship, O oh God, we pray that your Holy Spirit would descend upon us and begin to work and move and breathe within us. And speak a fresh word to us through this service this morning. We love you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, our opening hymn this morning is on page 338 or on our screen. It is Where He Leads Me. Where He Leads Me. <laughs> I can hear my Savior calling, I can hear my Savior calling, I can hear my Savior calling, take thy cross and follow, with 
screen. If you uh, receive emails from me, uh, I added the order of worship in the email link. And so those of you watching, hopefully you have that prayer uh, before you this morning. So I invite you to pray this prayer with me. Let us pray. Everlasting God, because of your tender mercy toward all people, you sent your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, to take upon himself our flesh and to suffer death upon the cross, that all should follow the example of his great humility. Mercifully grant that we may follow the example of his patience and also be made partakers of his resurrection. Through the same Jesus Christ our Lord, amen. As we come to our time of prayer this morning, um, let me remind you again that we have our prayer list uh, that I update uh, weekly from what you send to me or what you tell me, uh, and if I remember that, uh, it's best if I get that in printed form. But uh, So we have the updated list uh, uh, in the fellowship hall. Uh, those of you uh, watching, if you have prayer requests, please send those to me at UMC Pastor. Dot, uh, at umcpastor at brazosnet.com and I would love to uh, add that prayer request to our list So we, um, and I send that out by email on Thursdays as well uh, with the, the scripture and the uh, pre-reading uh, for our sermon uh, time this morning uh, a couple that I wanted to add on that uh, I attended uh, the wedding of Kai and Bree uh, last night in downtown Dallas, so um, our Jan and I did. So we asked your, your prayers for uh, Kai and Bree as they enter the, uh, the marriage covenant. Uh, and this, this is a, a season of, of covenants. Uh, as we uh, covenant with God through this Lenten season, uh, uh, we have these two have made the covenant in marriage um, to uh, uh, become one flesh. And so we pray for that, uh, that joining and, uh, and blessings upon them. Also, next week, I will be uh, working for the conference uh, on the Board of Ordained Ministry. We have uh, spring interviews Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. And so we have, I think we have nine candidates that we will be interviewing for uh, commissioning and ordination. So I ask your prayers for, uh, for those nine uh, candidates. Uh, who will have to go through this process for the next three days of being uh, uh, interviewed uh, orally um, by the Board of Ordained Ministry. And that's, uh, that's kind of an intimidating uh, time for them. Uh, I've been through it. So uh, we pray for them and uh, pray for all of us who will be interviewing them and, and uh, um, making decisions on, on their behalf uh, with, with the Holy Spirit working uh, through that whole process. So I pretty much will not be available uh, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday of next week. Uh, I will be doing that. All right, like I said, if you have prayer requests, uh, send those to me. I would love to add those to our list um, and get those out so everyone can, can be praying for, um, for one another. As we move into our time of prayer, we have a, a prayer special uh, music um, for this morning. Precious. 
Amazing God, we thank you again for today. We thank you for allowing us to gather as a people of faith. Uh, We come today, O God, uh, to this place. Uh, We have set this place apart uh, from all other places um, that we might come and, and worship. As we humbly bow before you, O God, we seek your mercy and we seek your grace for our lives. That whatever part of our life uh, does not line up with your will, O God, we pray that your spirit that lives within us would would give us a nudge one way or another. Uh, That spirit would would speak to our hearts and our minds, uh, convict us of of those things that we need to uh, repent, especially this time of, of Lent where we are trying to get uh, uh, our hearts and our minds, our bodies and our souls uh, uh, lined up with you, O God, that we might be able to celebrate the Easter uh, event, the resurrection of Christ and and even our own uh, as we become new creatures in Christ. And as we are reconciled to you, O God, We are a people of prayer, and so we keep uh, a prayer list. And you know our list, oh God. We we send it out by email, we print it and post it, uh, but we also have prayers uh, within our hearts and our minds this morning, things that we we, uh, brought with us. Uh, We didn't intend to bring them, maybe. Uh, Maybe they're just things that are troubling us. Maybe... Maybe they are uh, people that uh, uh, we fail to mention, uh, people that we love, people that we we said that we would lift up in prayer. And and so, Lord, we we ask that you search our hearts this morning. And all those those, uh, burdens that we, we bear, whether they are our own or on behalf of someone else, we pray, Lord, that you would take those upon yourself and gather them all together and pour out your spirit upon them that everyone that we have lifted up this morning whether that's printed or spoken or within our hearts and minds this morning we pray that you would begin to work in their lives oh god that you would wrap your loving arms around them and allow them somehow some way to to feel the warmth of your love and that healing may begin to take place that a a calmness a a peace would overshadow them that a sense of direction will be laid upon their their minds that from this day forward they can they can move forward in faith knowing that that they are not alone 
that you go with them. Perhaps you are even carrying them to a time of healing, a time of grace, a time of hope for their lives. We believe in the power of prayer, O oh God. And we believe that you are the acting agent in prayer. We are just messengers, messengers of hope, messengers of the kingdom of God. Help us to, to usher that message into the world, O oh God, as we focus today and this, this season of Lent on our discipleship as people who, who follow Jesus and, and are committed to Jesus. As such, Lord, we, we are the body of Christ. We are the church. We are the hands and feet of Christ in the here and now. And so we gather this morning as we always do and we, we pray together as Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us of our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Our hymn of invitation this morning is in the uh, little black hymnal, the little thin faith we sing hymnal, or it'll be on our screen. Uh, I have decided to follow Jesus. <laughs> I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back, no turning back. The world behind me, the cross before As we begin our sermon part this morning, let me uh, again uh, welcome those who are worshiping online this morning. Again, if you're watching, uh, uh, please let us know for attendance purposes. Uh, uh, check in with us. Tell us, uh, let us know you're here, you're watching. Uh, uh, like us, uh, share us, uh, however you want to uh, share that with us uh, to let us know who you are. And then we can... Uh, write your name down as uh, being present with us this morning because we're glad that you're here. So as we begin this part of our service, would you bow with me for our prayer for illumination? May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts gathered here be acceptable in your sight, O oh God. You are our strength. <coughs> you are our redeemer. We realize, O oh God, that the grass withers and the flower fades, but your word stands forever. Let it stand in this place, O oh God. Through the power of the Holy Spirit, let it stand in this place and take root and bear fruit in us. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. All right, so we'll be looking at uh, Luke chapter 9 this morning, verses 23 through 27. Uh, sermon title, Following Jesus, 
following Jesus. We actually moved back a little bit uh, from where we were a couple of weeks ago uh, in the text with the transfiguration of Jesus. If you remember, when we looked at that particular text, um, Jesus took Peter, James, and John, and they went up to the high mountain, and they went up there to pray. And, and we talked about what they might be praying about on that mountain. And we determined that uh, just prior to this event, in Luke chapter 9, in verse, verse, uh, in verse 9, uh, Herod wondered who Jesus was uh, that he had been hearing about. And then in verses 18 and 19, the crowds, when uh, Jesus asked uh, who they thought, uh, uh, asked the disciples who they thought the crowd thought he was, then they responded, you know, he may be John the Baptist, he may be uh, Elijah, or maybe one of the other prophets that had come back from the grave. And then Peter, they asked uh, the disciples, he asked the disciples in verse 20, uh, who uh, they thought he was. And Peter said in verse 20 that he was the Messiah of God. And at Peter's profession of faith, Jesus then uh, goes into detail and he lays out the requirements for being uh, one of his followers. It is Jesus' Jesus's discipleship plan that I feel that they were praying about on this Mount of Transfiguration, which was uh, uh, God's way of authenticating Peter's claim that God is uh, the Messiah, the Son of the living God. And so I want to take a look at Jesus' requirements this morning uh, for being a disciple, for being a follower. Uh, and I think it's important that as we begin to think about that and, and discuss that, I think we need to uh, uh, determine what our own profession of faith might be about who Jesus is. So who do you say that Jesus is? Who is Jesus to you? Now, we, we may be where Herod was in verse 9 with, you know, I, I wonder who he is, but I really don't know. Uh, we might be where the crowd is in verse 19 with, uh, he's, you know, we know he's some kind of a prophet by the way that, that uh, the miracles that he worked and, and the knowledge that he has. Uh, so he might be one, a, a prophet of some kind. We might be where Peter is in verse 20. Uh, where uh, we believe that he is the Messiah of God. We may be somewhere uh, in between several of those uh, scenarios. But who people say Jesus is, is a faith issue. I've been saying this for several weeks. It's, it's a faith issue. As I said last week, it depends on the level of our faith as to who Jesus is to each one of us. Now, a person won't follow someone that they don't believe in. It doesn't matter if we're talking about Facebook. I'm not going to follow somebody that I don't believe in on Facebook. I've had to unfriend some folks on Facebook because I don't believe in some of the things that they say or, or the language that they use. So we won't follow somebody on Facebook that we don't believe in. We certainly won't follow somebody toward eternal life if, if we don't believe in them. So whether we're talking about following somebody in, in our world or we're talking about following Jesus, the Messiah, the Son of God, it depends on our level of faith in that person as to if we follow, how we follow. Are you, are you following me? All right, all right. So, so we will only be committed to those that we believe in. And, and Jesus calls us, his followers to a very deep, Commitment, a very deep commitment. So that, that's our context for this morning uh, on this second Sunday of Lent. Uh, this, uh, this 40 days, if you will, of our spiritual discernment, our preparing of our hearts and our minds, our bodies and our souls for Easter, the resurrection of Christ. Uh, and like I said earlier, to hopefully for our resurrection uh, to new creatures in Christ. Uh, as we follow Jesus in total commitment, total commitment. So let's take a look at those verses. Uh, Luke chapter 9, verses uh, 23 through 27. Hear the word of the Lord. 
Then he said to them all, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross daily and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will save it. What does it profit them if they gain the whole world but lose or forfeit themselves? Those who are ashamed of me and of my words, of them the Son of Man will be ashamed when he comes in his glory and the glory of the Father and of the holy angels. But truly I tell you, there are some standing here who will not taste death before they see the kingdom of God. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. So let me begin the way Jesus uh, begins uh, this morning in our text. Notice in verse 23 that Jesus is at addressing all of them, all of the disciples. And, and if you want to want their names, go to Luke chapter 6, and, you, and they're all listed there. Um, he, and he says, If any... And we're included into that any, because this, this, is, this is the living word. It was meant for the disciples hearing this, uh, but it's also meant for those who will read it afterwards. It's the living word. So we're included in this any. If any want to be my followers, and then Jesus, that means Jesus gave them a choice. Jesus gives us a choice. We have a choice whether we want to be a follower of Jesus or, or if we want to be a follower of the world. Thinking about this, I was reminded of, of Joshua. You know the story of Joshua way back in, in the Old Testament book of Joshua, the chapter 24, where, uh, verse 15, where Joshua is leading the Israelites into the, the promised land. And he says, all right, now we're, we've come to the time. You've got to make a choice. You've got to make a choice. And he says in that, in that 15th verse, he says, choose this day whom you will serve, whether the gods of your ancestors, the gods your ancestors served in the region beyond the river, or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are living. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Amen. We will serve the Lord. Jesus gives us that choice. If any, if any want to be my followers. Therefore, we must choose. Will we serve this world or will we serve the Lord? This world has many gods just like they, Cana did back in the Old Testament days. We have many gods in, in our world. Do we, will we follow this world and its many gods or we, will we serve the Lord? And so I didn't see anybody get up and leave. I don't know about online. If we lost anybody, those of you who are, who are coordinating that with me or checking with me, well, you can let me know if we lost. Nope, I got a thumbs up. Nobody, nobody logged off of, of uh, online. So that means uh, we need to move forward this morning uh, as people of faith. We're saying that we do. We want to, we want to follow Jesus the Messiah, Peter's confession, uh, the Son of the living God this morning because Jesus has something to say to you. Jesus has something to say to me. I, I've arranged these uh, sayings in, a gr in four groups that I want to address this morning. First, a follower of Jesus must deny themselves. I've said it many, many times uh, uh, since I've been here in the last eight years that I believe that our greatest sin is self-centeredness. Uh, that, that's just my beliefs. Self-centeredness is our greatest sin. Self-centeredness is so strong uh, that uh, in verse 23, Jesus says that we must deny ourselves and take up the cross daily. Daily is the key word here. We must take up the cross and follow him daily. Follow him daily. Following Jesus requires sacrifice and inconvenience sometimes. Every day, we deny ourselves and we take up the cross we take up the, the way of Jesus, if you will, rather than the way of the world. Uh, and, and the way of the world is strong. You know it is. We want to follow the world. We want all the, uh, the, the 
wonderful things that the world has to offer. Uh, but we got to deny ourselves and follow Jesus uh, and live in the world, right? That's what Jesus requires of us, that we put him first in our lives. We're not supposed to sacrifice our Christian beliefs or our, and our values for the desires of the flesh. Uh, we must die to self and live for Christ. Uh, you, you'll recognize that as, a, as an Apostle Paul phrase. You know, when Paul finally uh, realized uh, who Jesus was, he said in Galatians uh, 2.20, uh, it is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. And the life that I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave his life for me. In his covenant renewal prayer, and, and I mentioned earlier that I have those uh, for you and those online if you want one. Um, these are go in your wallet, your purse. Uh, but in John Wesley's covenant renewal prayer that he offered every year on, uh, at uh, midnight on New Year's Eve, and we do that service uh, every other year. I still got my covenant renewal service in my Bible. Got my name on the back of it where I signed it. Uh, that's my commitment. Uh, but he prayed this prayer uh, not only just once a year, but he went through the service uh, once a year. He prayed it often. So I have these cards back there for you to pick one up. It has the traditional, uh, John Wesley's traditional version, and it has a contemporary version. Um, and so he, he would pray, I am no longer my own, but yours. Put me to what you will. Place me with whom you will. Put me to doing, put me to suffering. Let me be put to work for you or set aside for you. Praised for you or criticized for you. Let me be full, let me be empty, let me have all things, let me have nothing. I freely and fully surrender all things to your glory and service. And now, O oh wonderful and holy God, creator, redeemer, and sustainer, you are mine and I am yours. So be it. And the covenant which I have made on earth, let it be made in heaven. Amen. Amen. Please pick one of these up before you leave today. Contact me, folks online, and tell me that you want one of those. This is what John Wesley meant when, he, when it says, take up the cross. What I want to know is what that might look like for you. What does it mean for you to, to take up the cross and follow Jesus? You know, Paul gave up his high status in the Sanhedrin. Uh, the prodigal son in Luke 15, if you remember, he, he gave up the far country and all that loose living uh, and, 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 and went back home. Uh, the disciples gave up their uh, fishing nets or their tax booths uh, uh, and started fishing for people. When we are rejected because of our Christian beliefs and moral values, we, we take up the cross. When we, we sacrifice uh, our time in order to share with one another's burdens, uh, we take up the cross. When we change our own lifestyles uh, to fit the lifestyle of, of a Christian, uh, we take up the cross. When we go without something so someone else can have something, uh, we take up the cross. When we stand for social or racial justice, Amen. we take up the cross. You know, and the, and the list could go on. It could go on. But we need to move on. And so number two, a follower of Jesus must lose their life. Must lose their life. When we take up the cross, we actually are laying down our life in the flesh. And we are taking up a life of righteousness. We surrender our heart, mind, body, and soul uh, to God in Jesus Christ, just like John Wesley's uh, prayer says. And Jesus says in verse 24 that by doing this, we are actually saving our life. Through the power of the Holy Spirit, we experience eternal life now in this life and for everlasting in the life to come. So it's a win-win it's a situation for the one who surrenders their life to Christ. Jesus explains this further in verse 25. He says, What will it profit a person if 
if uh, they gain the whole world, but they forfeit or they lose their, their selves. In other words, what will, will, it, will it gain us if we pile up all this earthly wealth and status but have no treasures uh, piled up in heaven for our heavenly reward? Well, Jesus talks about that in Matthew 6. Paul says in Philippians 1, verse 21, For to me, living is Christ, and dying is gain. So for Paul, whether living or dying, uh, physically or spiritually, uh, Paul was content because he totally surrendered his life to Christ. Number three, a follower of Jesus must acknowledge the lordship of Jesus. The lordship of Jesus. <coughs> In verse 26, Jesus uses, this, uses the term Son of Man to describe himself as one who will come in the parousia, which is a term that, that is, describes the return of Christ, when, when Christ returns to raise the dead and judge the nations. Uh, Jesus taught in Matthew 12, 36, he says, I tell you on the day of judgment, you will have to give an account for every careless word that you utter, for by your word you will be justified, and by your word you will be condemned. And then in Luke 12, 5, Jesus warned the crowds that one day, uh, or the one that they should follow, the one that they should fear or have reverence for, is the one who also has the authority to cast into hell. So it's, it's the lordship of of Jesus, who is the one who has the authority uh, to judge our discipleship at the end of time. He says in verse 26, further, that the one that denies him, or denies the Son of Man, he uses that term, the Son of Man will deny that person on the day of judgment. And Jesus says, I will just say, I don't know you. How sad will it be on that day for those who stand before Jesus and Jesus says, I don't know who you are. I don't know who you are. I was reading some commentary this week by a the theologian, Dr. Alan Culpepper, uh, on this particular text. And uh, Dr. Culpepper, he, he says that discipleship requires a public commitment so that the way one lives and the way one does, or what one does, may be a witness to others. Which brings us to our fi final saying this morning. Jesus says that a follower must convey the hope of the kingdom of God. The hope of the kingdom. Truly I tell you, Jesus says in verse 27, there are some standing here who will not taste death before they see the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is, is now and it's not yet. It's, it's, it's uh, mysterious. Uh, Luke 17, verses 20 and 21, Jesus told the Pharisees when they asked the question, uh, where is the kingdom of God or when is the kingdom of God? He told the Pharisees, the kingdom of God is not coming with things that can be observed nor will they say, look, here it is, or there it is. For in fact, the kingdom of God is among you. And, and other versions say the kingdom of God is within you. Within you. The next chapter over in verse 10, I mean chapter 10 in Luke, when, when Jesus sends the 70 out on their mission, he tells them, when you go into a town, and you speak to the people and you cure diseases and you, and you witness, say to the people, the kingdom of God has come near to you. Has come near to you. A follower of Jesus has the awesome opportunity and responsibility to allow the hope of the kingdom of God to come near by the way we live our lives by the way you live your life and the way I live my life. Folks, following Jesus requires total commitment. Total commitment 
of life, taking up the cross, giving one's life in obedience to Jesus's, uh, to Jesus's direction, forsaking the pursuit of wealth and living out one's discipleship publicly before one another. Dr. Culpepper even uh, steps on my toes a bit when he says, uh, discipleship and lordship are interrelated. They are connected. Uh, he, he says, the nature of our discipleship always reflects our understanding of Jesus' lordship. So basically, we're, we're back to square one with, with Herod in verse 9 and the crowd in verse 19, uh, the, the disciples in verse 20, and us. Who do you say Jesus is? Look at the way you live your life and you have the answer. Look at the way I live my life and I have the answer. And my first response to that is, ouch, that hurt, that hurt. Let us pray. <coughs> Father, we thank you for your word today. Uh, as always, we thank you for allowing the Holy Spirit to, to come in the midst of us and bring these, this living word to life before us and where it speaks to us and, and provides a, a fresh word uh, for us where seeds might be planted within our hearts. And we pray, Lord, that that same Holy Spirit would make them grow and bear fruit, that we might be known as followers of Jesus. We love you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So our closing hymn this morning is on page 354 which is appropriate, I surrender all, I surrender all. This is our invitational hymn. As always, the altar is open for you to come and pray. If uh, you want me to pray with you, just motion to me and I'll come and I'll put my mask on and come and pray with you. Uh, but this is your moment. This is your, mo your moment uh, for you to uh, uh, try to make sense of all that we've done in this place in this form of worship this morning. Would you stand as we sing? All to Jesus I surrender, all to Him I freely give. I will ever love and trust Him in His presence day.
So good to see you this morning. Glad you're worshiping online. Um, would you receive uh, the benediction? As people of God, go forth in peace and surrender all to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. <laughs>